Alfa Romeo is often an object of jokes because of its reliability. It's also an object of almost sexual desire because the Italians usually make some pretty good-looking cars. But these are only just stereotypes. This Giulietta neither broke down nor does it give me morning glory. This car is hardly new, but it's been given a facelift recently. In 2011, the compact Alfa was close second in the European Car of the Year award contest. Nissan Leaf won, probably for its technology, definitely not for the looks. Alone in the picture, the Alfa Romeo Giulietta still looks interesting, but park it next to a few newer hatchbacks and it no longer looks like a barely legal teen or a sexy coed. It's a MILF at best. Underneath the metal, it's not. Fiat Bravo chassis, even though the two cars are of similar size, Giulietta was built on a newer platform, extended version of which is also used in the Dodge Dart and the new Jeep Cherokee. Under the bonnet of this example is a 1.4 turbocharged petrol engine making a respectable 170 horsepower. You can choose a less powerful 1.4 petrol or a 1750cc 240 horsepower engine. There are also 1.6 and 2 liter diesels producing between 105 and 175 horsepower. The boot is 350 liters. It's one of the smallest boots compared to the current competition, but it has regular shape and a shopping bag hook. Unfortunately, the seats don't fold flat. So I have to do the limbo dance to actually get in the back. But once I'm here, it's, uh, it's alright. If the uh, driver is average height, then an average height passenger will fit. But that's only if uh, his or she is average height. If he or she is, well, uh, taller, then it's becoming rather tight. It's getting rather tight here, even with these concave backrests here. Now, we have two cup holders and uh, some storage here in the armrest. And uh, there is a latch for your skis here. So that's convenient. Uh, the back seat is hard but it's hard in a good way. So the front seats are pretty comfortable as well. They're hard but comfortable. They offer decent lateral support. It's not great, but it's all right. The dashboard changed a little bit uh, during the uh, facelift. So we have the sat-nav here. This is a sat-nav we know from Jeep, for example, the place where the sat-nav used to be is now just some storage you can put your uh, you can put your i don't know uh, car documents keys and stuff in here maybe even sunglasses uh, there's uh, an armrest here and inside there is storage enough for a big smartphone however if you want to use your cup holders you have to fold it because the cup holders are underneath uh, what else uh, now this is a high spec model with uh, high trim so uh, there are bits of leather here and there, but the plastics everywhere else are, well, sort of cheap and nasty. Oh, and if you want to put a bottle of water somewhere, even a small bottle of water, it barely fits in the door bins. Alfa Romeo has its DNA switch. D for dynamic, N for natural, and A for all weather. I get the dynamic and all weather modes, uh, but I have a problem with the normal natural mode, which is supposed to be your everyday mode. Unfortunately, it castrates the engine and takes away any fun from driving, so it's just better to put it in dynamic and uh, at least enjoy yourself, right? In dynamic mode, uh, there is a sharper throttle response, the steering is a bit heavier, and uh, it also turns on the Q2, electronic imitation of a limited slip diff. This so-called LSD breaks the inside wheel when accelerating in a corner, the outside wheel turns faster, which improves uh, handling during dynamic driving. In dynamic mode, uh, Giulietta not only reacts faster to the uh, gas pedal and uh, the steering becomes heavier, also the ESP intervenes a bit later and uh, brake fluid pressure is higher, which helps to brake faster and uh, it gives you a better feel of the brake pedal. 
the other night I uh, drove the Giulietta on a dark twisty road so I didn't have to look at this rather uninspiring interior and uh, you know what I actually quite enjoyed it the car is surprisingly neutral and the Q2 really works um, the gearbox that's unfortunately made of rubber like the car was made by the French or something uh, and the Alpha lacks a good sound. This does not mean that the Giulietta is quiet though. Uh, unfortunately, from around 70 km per hour upwards, the car is becoming quite noisy. The good news is that uh, the noise doesn't get more annoying, it's just that the tire noise and the engine noise are replaced by the wind noise when you're going at motorway speed. The 0 to 100 km per hour time is less than 8 seconds. Fuel consumption in real life is about 10 liters per 100 km in the city, 7.5 on the motorway. Prices of the Giulietta start at around 20,000 euros. The 1.4 170 horsepower petrol will set you back at least 25 grand, add 2,000 for automatic gearbox, 2 grand for the leather, and all of a sudden you end up with a rather expensive car. It's going to get even more expensive if you go for a diesel engine or the Quadrifoglio Verde hot hatch. At 30,000 euros there is a lot to choose from and not just from the compact car segment. You can watch more of my compact car reviews by clicking here. Also don't forget to subscribe to my channel by clicking here. New reviews every Friday. Also don't forget to comment, rate and share my videos. You can also follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram and Google+. You'll find all the links in the description below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.